In this video, I will show you step by step how to find the best parameters for your Qcoin cryptocurrency trading bull. Now without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do, now the first thing you want to do is to go over to trade and then click on the trading bull. You'll then be sent over to this page where you can see that at the moment I've got two bots running, which are both in the red, however they're for long term so it doesn't bother me as of right now. Now when I go over to my profits and go over to my historical profits, you can see that I have done quite a few trades in the green and this one was just a bad mistake of mine, actually a pretty stupid mistake of mine. I made a video about how to set a stop loss on your Qcoin trading bot and I forgot to remove it afterwards so I had a stop loss on a random price and the stop loss got hit. So this one doesn't actually count because it was a mistake and not a bad trade. Now what you want to do is to go over to spot grid and click on create bot. So those are the parameters that the AI of Qcoin recommends you using. However, when you go over to customize, you can do everything yourself. You can set up the low for the price range, the price range high, the number of placed orders, or in other words, the amount of grids, and you're even able to set up advanced settings, like the stop price, the take profit, or the entry price. Now how I myself set up my price range is to go over to trading view, and then I go over to the chart, and then I click on the pair in the top left and search for the pair I'm trying to trade, which in this case is our grand USDT. Now just a quick note, you can choose the pair your bot runs on the right here, and you can choose pretty much every pair available. But I see a lot of people will go over to volatility and set it on the most volatile cryptocurrencies. Now please don't do this. The reason for that is because as you can see, the change is 1000% in the green, which is insane. However, after greens come red, and after red comes green. Which basically means that if your coin does a 10x in 24 hours, it's gonna have a major correction. And if your bot is running on one of these pairs, you will lose a lot of your money. Now with that being said, that's the reason I only trade on pairs or on currencies that I actually trust. So coins that I believe in. The reason for that is also because if my trade does go wrong, I can still hold on to the belief that my coins will grow in value in the future. Now once you have selected the right pair, then you want to go over to trading view and search for that pair as well. Then you have to select the time frame you're charting on. I myself only chart on the 1 hour, 1 day and 1 week chart. Now if you're charting on the 1 hour, your trade will most likely last for a couple of hours to 2 days at maximum. And on the daily chart, your trade will most likely last for a couple of days to maybe 1 week or a week and a half. And if you're charting on the week frame, you're basically looking at a trade of maybe half a month to multiple months. Now with that being clear, that's the reason right now I'm gonna chart at the 1 hour chart. However, like I said, these bots that are in the red are charted on the weekly chart. Because as you can see, Algorand is gonna have a pretty good run if you go off of the stochastic RSI. Now I'm gonna go over to the 1 hour chart. And you can then see that as of right now, the stochastic RSI is once again in the oversold territory. Now as you guys also can see, whenever the stochastic RSI gets in the oversold territory, in most of the cases there comes a correction afterwards. Now in this case it was a correction of 10% in the red, which isn't that bad in cryptocurrencies, however it's something to be aware of. Now of course there are exceptions, because as you guys can see right here it was at the top or the oversold territory, or the overbought territory on the stochastic RSI, However, the cryptocurrency still made a 14% gain, and as of right now, it's 20% in the green. Now, still something to not forget is the fact that they have made a little bit of the correction in the stochastic RSI before the push happened. Now, with that being explained, I always like to go over to the lines and click on the horizontal line. You can click on it, or you can just press Alt-H to shortcut it. Now, you want to zoom out a little bit and look for any areas of support or resistance. If you don't know how to find them, I will show you right now. I see one right here, right here, right here, and right here I don't really see a line but it's more of a area. So right now I've charted three lines of support and resistance and one area of volume, which basically is the same however it's an area instead of one line. Now if you're not sure how to chart the lines, you can see that when I go over to my lowest line, you can see that when I go over to this part right here, there's one wick touch on the line. Now a little bit more to the left, you can see that the price action broke through it and then bounced off of the line as a support. Right here the line functioned as a resistance. Resistance once again, resistance once again. 
right here it says support and a resistance and here is two bodywork candles so that's how you chart a line and the line above that so this line you can see right here is a resistance or a support i mean right here's a support support once again support support and right here it's more of a um, breakthrough than a resistance then it functions as a resistance once again then a bull trap and that's it and i'm not going to chart every single line however that is how i myself make the charts now obviously the highest line so this one is based on the price action right here and when i zoom out a little bit more you can see the pink or purple area of support and resistance and i've based that on the price action right here with the resistances more volume resistance once again you can see that for me this would be my stop loss this would be my entry price and this would be my take profit and now myself i always like to wait on when the stochastic rsi is in the oversold territory because you kind of have a guarantee that it's going to go upwards so depending on how much the price resets to reset the stochastic rsi that would decide whether or not this is my stop loss or my entry price because sometimes the price action drops a lot like right here it's a 20 percent decrease and you can see that the stochastic rsi made a reset even made a push and then reset once again and right here for example you can see that the reset only was literally two percent so that's a 10x difference now when you go ahead and set either a short or a long position so you can see your risk to rewards ratio you can see that as of right now the trade we've set up isn't that good because the risk rewards ratio is 0.9 percent however as you guys can see right here is another area of volume or support or resistance or however you want to name it you can then see that the risk of a rise ratio as of right now is 1.9 which is pretty good so for me myself this would be my stop loss this would be my entry price and this would be my take profit now the price range is not a stop loss or a take profit i just want to make that clear the price range is the price in which your bot does trades now for me i would still like that to be between my stop loss and my take profit so i'm going to go ahead and give my price range low a 1.41 usdt the highest will be 1.65 or because it's a take profit and i don't want it to be above most of the volume it's going to be 1.63 because most people will set a take profit at the same price so i always go a little bit below that so i'm sure that my order will go through earlier than most of the other orders now once you've set up the price range low and high you can go ahead and fill in the numbers of placed orders or the numbers of grids now grids are kind of more complicated to explain however i will go ahead and give it my best try so let's say this is our maximum price and our lowest price now a grid is basically a line that is on every level i'm not gonna make this chart very good looking i'm sorry for that but it's just for the example now in this case there's 15 grids the lowest price there's 13 in between and the highest price now what a grid is is basically if the price as of right now is right here and it goes down your bot will buy into the coin every grid it goes down and when the grid goes up or the price action goes up i mean the grid will be sold so this grid right here will sell right here this run will sell right here and this one will sell right here now when it goes down it will buy once again because it's a bot and it can do that very very consistent and this is basically how you can optimize profits while holding a coin as well which i think is really cool now if the price goes up higher than you ever bought your coin set, you might be like, well, how do I sell? Uh, you don't. It's pretty simple, your bot doesn't sell, so it's basically neutral. And then when the price goes back down, your bot will buy again. And if it goes up at any point once again, it will sell. So this is how the profits work. Now the grids, I just want to show this to you because it's important to understand what you're doing with your money. The grids are basically connected. This is a grid pair, this is a grid pair, this is a grid pair and you can see that this one has not sold yet a simple way to understand it is the grid you buy at will be sold one grid higher you can also see that the first time you bought into this coin in this example would be sold right here even though i didn't make it red in your thoughts this should be red that's a mistake of mine i'm sorry and then these are the grid connections once again now i hope i explained the level of grids clearly to you if not let me know in the comments down below so i can explain it to you further but this is basically how grids work so if you decide to go with three grids, you have the highest price, one grid right here, and the lowest grid right here. If you decide to go with 100 grids, you will have this times 5, 6, or 7. So there will be a lot of trades going on. Now I always like to go with higher grids, so I'm going to go with 33. But just for the example, look at the interval USDT. Right now, every grid is 0 0.0066 USDT. 
And when you go ahead and do five grids, for example, you can see that the amount is quite a bit big, bigger. Now that you know how a grid works, you can go ahead and give your total investment. You can also use the cryptocurrency you're trading. However, for me, it will just be USDT. And like I said, for me, this is my stop loss, entry price and take profit. So I am also going to go ahead and click on these options. Now the stop price, so the stop loss is at 1.41 or actually a little bit below it, 1.39. The take profit price is right here, so that's 1.65 or in this case actually 1.64 because you can go with the same price as your price range high. So for me it's going to be 1.64 USDT as the take profit and the entry price is right here which is equal to 1.48 USDT or 1.485 USDT. Now these are my parameters. If there's anything I didn't explain clearly enough, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. However, when you click on create, you see the order confirmation, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on confirm, and you can then see that when I go over to running, my bot has been created. If you found this video helpful, let me know by leaving a like or subscribing to my channel for more tutorials about cryptocurrencies.